Welcome to a Neapper short video on Mindfulness 101, Introduction to the Basics for Your Life and Work. We're happy you have joined us today. This introductory webinar is designed for anybody who seeks to gain a foundational understanding of mindfulness, its benefits, and how to incorporate it into your life, work, and organization. For anybody who doesn't know us, we are the New York Association of Psychiatric Rehabilitation Services, otherwise known as NIAPRS. We are a network and partnership of providers and participants throughout New York State with the mission of improving the services and lives of people impacted by psychiatric and trauma-related conditions. Our mission is to promote a shift in service delivery from a focus on illness and symptom management to healing and recovery, promote the availability of quality rehabilitative and peer support services, and promote the rights and informed choice of people living with mental health conditions. We truly believe in mental health recovery and work hard to share that message throughout our community. And to introduce myself, my name is Perrin Dudiger, and I am the Training and Technical Assistance Facilitator for NIAPRS for the Hudson River and North Country Territory of New York State. I am a social worker with varied experience in the human services field, as well as a community speaker on mental health awareness for about a decade in my own home community, having the mission of ending the silence and stigma surrounding mental illness and trauma. I am also a very passionate nature and mindfulness enthusiast. This video is made for the PROSE Adult Home Outreach and Curriculum Project. We are extremely proud to support the PROSE community to assist people living in adult homes to be independent. Please visit our website at pros.niapers.org and there you'll find information on financial reimbursement for outreach. You're also going to find several curricula that were designed specifically for this project for people living in adult homes or state psychiatric centers to develop and maintain their independence. So wherever you're joining us from today, whether it be from your home, office, or other location, we would like to offer you this opportunity to take something we call a mindful moment. Our intention is to give you this gift, a gift so important that we give ourselves on a regular basis, to just be, to connect with yourself, providing a space that will help you to be more open and receptive to learning. It may help if you have soft, relaxing background music or sounds of nature to help you feel more calm. All you need to do right now is to get settled in your seat, close your eyes if it feels comfortable for you to do so, and just take a moment to mentally disconnect from your to-do list. Everything that happened before you began watching this webinar and all of the tasks you will accomplish when you're done. Turning off the distractions around you and allowing yourself this time to simply learn and be curious. Remind yourself that everything you must do after can always be picked up. And just allow yourself to be as present as possible, to be right here, right now. When thoughts arise that distract you, simply notice them and gently shift your awareness back to this moment. Every time this happens again and again, acknowledge your awareness as a gift and simply let the distraction float away, just like a cloud would in the sky. Now feeling the chair supporting your body, noticing how it feels to be sitting and any tensions you might be holding somewhere in your body. Taking a moment to try to relax the parts of you that feels tense or stiff and allowing the tension to melt or away or dissolve as much as it will. Become aware in this moment that you're breathing. Notice the sensations of your inhales and exhales, the temperature of the air as it enters your nose, your throat. Fill your belly with this air, letting it nourish and energize you. And with each exhale, see if you can allow a little bit of the tension and stress to exit your body and mind. Imagining you are inhaling peace and calm and exhaling stress and overwhelm. Taking a minute to just sit with yourself and send yourself 
some gratitude and loving kindness for showing up, for engaging and learning, and for continuing to do the wonderful service work that you do. Now, gently return your attention to your body sitting in your chair, feeling your feet on the ground, feeling rooted, imagining that there are roots extending through your feet, down through the floor, connected to the earth allowing this to make you feel centered and grounded in your body. Now you may rub your hands together gently, creating warmth and putting your palms over your eyes before you open them to expose them to the light. Starting off the training in this way can help us to be more present and focused. Mindfulness is a great skill to cultivate, which is exactly what we are here to explore. It can help you in extraordinary ways in both your personal and professional life and will allow you to cultivate the ability to be more present and engaged with those you serve. Let's review our learning objectives. To understand mindfulness and some benefits of mindfulness practice, to identify mindfulness practices for use with the people you serve, and to recognize ways of using mindfulness as a practitioner for self-care. So what comes to your mind when you hear the word mindfulness? It's become a bit of a buzzword that's gained widespread attention in our society for quite some time, but so many of us have very different ideas of what it really is and how it might be practiced. Many people, including myself, when I was first introduced to it, can become really intimidated or turned off by this concept due to the type of exposure we've received. Maybe some of us have images of a person sitting up on the floor, silently in a state of bliss or enlightenment for long periods of time. Or maybe we've pictured somebody in a challenging yoga position, dressed up in fancy yoga attire. Just something that seems really inaccessible and impossible for any of us at this time. The point is that we want to make mindfulness accessible to everybody. We want it to be a useful life tool, even a potential philosophy for dealing with the universal challenges that are inherent to life and even the more profound suffering we may at times face. To help us understand mindfulness more clearly, let's look at a general definition of mindfulness as described by Dr. John Kabat-Zinn, developer of the widely used Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction or MBSR for short program, a model with widespread support from the scientific community. John Kabat-Zinn says that mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. And just a quick note about Dr. John Kabat-Zinn. He learned about and studied mindfulness from an Eastern foundation and later integrated it with the Western science to develop MBSR. This integration was a crucial step in making him a pioneer in helping to bring mindfulness into our Western society. John Kevitson's research has led to the integration of mindfulness into many of our mainstream institutions, such as medicine, healthcare and hospitals, schools and higher education, major corporations, the prison system, the legal profession, and even professional sports. This is a simple diagram highlighting the very different states of being or states of awareness we might experience. I'm sure most of us can relate to that figure on the left, our mind full of preoccupations, not focusing our attention on our surrounding environment and the very real state of the moment at hand. This is a habit for many of us to live this way, particularly with our very fast paced, production-based society, we're constantly bombarded with data, technology, and social media. Yet, I'm sure many of us know what it's like from time to time to be on this right side of the diagram, even if for very brief moments in our day, a state in which we feel more fully alive, aware, embodied, and taking in the world around us with a sense of awe and connectedness. So just think for a moment. When do you or have you felt the most present or mindful in your life? Connected to your body, your environment, connected to the now moment? Give some thought to how you might describe that experience. 
What does it feel like for you to be there? And when do you tend to feel the most disconnected or dissociated? And how does it feel in contrast to be in that space? It's important for us to reflect on what it is like for us to be in these two very different states. The degrees and duration of mindfulness states we have experienced may vary, but once we get to know ourselves at a deeper level and do some more self-insight, we can learn to cultivate more of the present moment awareness and it becomes more natural to access this on a more consistent basis. Taking a look at the history of meditation practice, its origins stem back as part of Eastern religions for thousands of years, particularly out of Hinduism and later Buddhism. While mindfulness and meditation practices were rooted in religious and spiritual traditions, it's important for us to realize the evolution of mindfulness into our modern Western world and examine the current implications and potentialities. Mindfulness has taken a journey from East to West and from religion to science. Embracing the traditional methods rooted in spirituality are essential for some people. In our work, we need to respect and honor diverse belief systems and cultures. Although we may not necessarily align ourselves with the cultural aspects of it, it's important to recognize them and discuss this topic in a culturally sensitive, inclusive way. Also, yoga and mindfulness have been very closely associated as some practices directly incorporate mindfulness and awareness of the body. Some people may automatically think of yoga when they hear the word mindfulness, as yoga has gained much popularity in our society in recent decades. Yoga also has roots in Eastern religion, but has been adapted to the Western way of life. However, it is not necessary for yoga to be incorporated into a mindfulness practice, unless it's desired by a person. Yoga can be a mindful practice for some, but not necessarily for everyone. Expanding our scope of mindfulness and looking through the lens of modern Western science and health, we can recognize a multitude of ways that mindfulness can be practiced in secular and non-religious ways, if more comfortable for some people. The important thing to realize is that mindfulness has benefits for everyone. As it's important for us as helping professionals to embrace how this is a person-centered practice in that it is to be practiced in unique ways according to the individual's particular needs, interests, and culture. The beauty is that there are many practices that are highly adaptable. Practices that have been applied successfully to a variety of populations in diverse settings and contexts. There is no one-size-fits-all approach. Every single human being's experience is different. Therefore, everyone will respond differently with more awareness to internal and external stimuli and benefit from different forms of practice. Let's start with the underlying philosophy or foundational attitudes described by Dr. John Kabat-Zinn in his work on MBSR. According to Kabat-Zinn, there are key attitudes that are foundational to the practice of mindfulness for the purposes of stress reduction and wellness. The first, non-judgment, involves intentionally assuming the mind frame of an impartial witness. The second, patience, is a form of wisdom allowing us to give ourselves the space and time to have our experiences. A beginner's mind refers to a mindset that's willing to experience everything as if for the first time. Trust means having trust in yourself and honoring your own inner knowledge and experience. Non-striving refers to an attitude that avoids our usual state of trying to get somewhere or accomplish something in particular, but encourages a person to simply be. Acceptance means to see things as they really are in each and every moment, rather than trying to see them as they would like them to be, or as a worse interpretation may present. In other words, simply taking things as they come. And finally, letting go, which is related to the attitude of acceptance. Letting go refers to an attitude of intentionally releasing control and allowing ourselves to fully participate in our experience. In addition, some people include a concept of self-compassion as a key attitude. Self-compassion refers to a state of permitting the practice of kindness, love, and acceptance for oneself. 
Some researchers tend to separate the concepts of mindfulness and self-compassion as two distinct concepts, while others consider self-compassion as an integral aspect incorporated in mindfulness. It's not uncommon for some people to react to the idea of mindfulness with some skepticism. They might think it's silly or a waste of time. But scientific evidence shows that mindfulness training has the potential to improve our health. It's been shown through various studies to actually change the structure of our brains, as well as have a positive impact on the various systems of our body, including our cardiovascular health and our immune functioning. Since mindfulness has been making its way more and more into our mainstream of health and mental health through the past few decades, there's been growing research that's been showing the multitude of whole health, holistic benefits of mindfulness practice. It's wellness for the entire mind and body. We know how important physical health is to mental health and vice versa. We can't separate our mind from our body or our body from our mind. They function together and are interconnected in very complex ways that we are just beginning to understand from a scientific perspective. In addition, the American Psychological Association has recognized these important empirically supported benefits of mindfulness. Reduced rumination, stress reduction, boosts to working memory, improved focus, less emotional reactivity, more cognitive flexibility, relationship satisfaction, and self-insight. So the idea of embarking on a path towards mindfulness practice doesn't need to be intimidating. Baby steps may be the best approach for you, as well as many of the individuals you work with. Reflecting on this quote by Eckhart Tolle, it really can be starting out that simple, taking a conscious breath in any given moment. This takes us briefly out of the autopilot operating mode and brings about that awareness we discussed. Let's take a look at some of the ways mindfulness can be practiced. The breath. There are many different breathing techniques to help regulate the body's stress response and elicit deeper states of relaxation. Focusing on the breath can be done by bringing attention to various points of breathing, such as the nose, throat, lungs, and belly, feeling the sensations of the air, the temperature, maybe counting as you inhale and exhale, creating a rhythm, making sure the breath is gentle and comfortable, not forceful. A breathing pattern that was developed by Dr. Andrew Well called the 478 breath is one technique that's been shown to be effective. And the practice of pranayama, an ancient yogic technique, helps practitioners gain control over their breathing. Much information can be found on the internet on how to practice many of these important exercises. The body scan. You may lay with your back to the floor or bed and your eyes closed, moving your awareness through your body, focusing on one area at a time. Stopping whenever you find an area that's unusually tight or sore and focus your breath on this area until that part relaxes. You can use the common healing visualization at this point as well, like a, a ball of white light melting into the sore or tense spot. There are also guided body scan meditations you can access online. Object meditation. This involves holding an object that is special or interesting to you. Focusing all of your senses on it and noting the information your senses feed back to you, including the object's shape, size, color, texture, smell, taste, or sound it makes when manipulated. Mindful eating. Like the previous exercise, this exercise can be completed with all of your senses while you focus on a food. Eat slowly, noticing the smell, taste, and feel of the food. How often do we scarf down food quickly in a mindful, um, excuse, excuse me, mindless way? The experience of eating can be one that allows us to practice mindfulness and to be a more pleasurable sensory experience. Walking meditation. Take a leisurely walk at a gentle but familiar pace. Observe how you walk and pay attention to the sensations in your body. Notice how your shoulders feel. Do they feel tight, loose, strong? The sensations in your feet as they meet the ground, the swing of your hips with each stride, and matching your breath to your footsteps. Mindful stretching. You can practice mindful stretching with any set of stretches that you like, but if you want a guided practice, you can give yoga a try. If you're interested in yoga, it doesn't need to necessarily be in a classroom or studio. You can start simply with YouTube videos or cell phone apps. 
Just make sure that you're going at a pace that's safe and comfortable for you. And you embark on that path with the intention of improving your whole health. Make it about being mindful and healthy, not necessarily about being a pro yogi or athlete. Affirmation and mantra. Repeating positive, comforting words or phrases to yourself can be a really helpful anchor. Using these words and phrases as you breathe possibly, focusing on the feelings that arise from focusing on these affirmations. For example, an affirmation might be, I am at peace, I am well, I am at ease. You can create one for yourself that feels best. And over time, repeating these statements on a regular basis can bring about a greater sense of peace and security. As you may be very aware, self-care and self-compassion are critical to being a good practitioner. We need to be able to fill up our own cup and put on our own oxygen mask, as they tell us on an airplane, before we can really help another. We know that in our field, there are very high rates of burnout, compassion fatigue, secondary traumatic stress, and re-traumatization that may result from working with people and helping them to navigate their hardship and suffering. By learning and using mindfulness practices for self-care in our own lives, we will be better able to serve others and get more fulfillment out of our work. Practicing mindfulness enhances a provider-participant relationship by being able to be more present with others, which leads to greater therapeutic alliance and connection. According to Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, leading neuroscience researcher and proponent of mindfulness-based methods for healing, Mindfulness not only makes it possible to survey our internal landscape with compassion and curiosity, but can also actively steer us in the right direction for self-care. When we learn these practices, incorporate them into our own lives for our own well-being, we can better help others, and we can teach them these practices as well. Additionally, there have been many benefits for service providers identified in the research. Some of these benefits for psychotherapists who practice mindfulness meditation include increased empathy, compassion, better counseling skills, decreased stress and anxiety, and a better quality of life. If you'd like to start your own mindfulness or meditation practice but don't know where to start, downloading one of these meditation apps can be a great first step. Many of them are free and others have options for paying subscriptions with additional content. There are great ways of regularly incorporating guided meditation into your daily life and great to be able to recommend for others. In regards to systems transformation and organizational change, there have been an abundance of cultural shifts happening within organizations that result from the incorporation of mindfulness training and practice. Major corporations such as Google, Nike, Apple, General Mills, and others have been offering mindfulness training to their employees as they recognize the payoff of having a workforce equipped with mindfulness skills. This has translated to substantial gains in employee productivity and performance, affecting their bottom lines. Similarly, mindfulness embedded in social service agencies has the potential to bring about extraordinary benefits and increase productivity for staff, leading to improved wellness outcomes for the people served by organizations. Mindfulness is able to strengthen staff to staff as well as staff to client relationships. Some ways you may consider making your organization into a more mindful one may be by bringing in community meditation, breathing, or other movement practices as rituals for starting and ending your day, your groups, work meetings, as a way to tune in to one another and become more present. You may wanna think about holding peer groups having a group office practice during lunch breaks, facilitating these group experiences, such as breathing, centering before team meetings, supervision at the end of your client groups and sessions can really create a sense of stronger community. You can create these habits, maybe scheduling them as regular exercises. Also, it's key to think about your physical space, your environment. Does it feel like a calming one? You may want to examine the colors, the decor. How can you make your space one that reflects more peace and safety? One that people can feel present in and embrace as a comfortable place. Maybe you want to include calming music in the background if possible, more plants or pictures. We hope that you feel inspired to begin the journey of incorporating mindfulness into your own life, work, and organization. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. As part of the Systems Transformation Division at NIAPRS, we are the NIAPRS Collective, a team dedicated to increasing organizational and program level systems transformation among OMH licensed and funded programs. We travel around New York State providing training and technical assistance services. The collective team works with providers to assist you in implementing recovery-oriented practices, creating a learning environment that challenges mindsets, strengthens skills, and builds a foundation for recovery-oriented, person-centered, trauma-informed, and culturally competent care. Our services are offered at your site and are individualized to meet your specific program needs. We encourage you to reach out to NIAPRS, and we will be sure to get you in touch with the facilitator in your region who can provide you with additional information regarding our menu of training offerings.